Good evening, everybody. Thank you for being here with us. I'm so excited because we have been highlighting um, major women of black history and that does not excluded to uh, women of the past. That's also about women who are making history now. And so tonight we have with us Dr. Hairston, who's a board certified OBGYN practicing right here in Hampton Roads. And so we're so excited to have you here with us tonight, Dr. Hairston. Thanks for joining Thank us. Thank you. So we are going to talk about vaginal discharge and it's not weird, it's totally normal. And we are going to just make it easy and answer all your burning questions. Um, but before we get into that, Dr. Hairston has an incredible resume, which you can read up on, on your own time. But one of the achievements that I'm most interested in and inspired by is her organization, Time For Her. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Absolutely. Um, so Time for Her is um, a nonprofit that I founded in 2017. Um, the way that it came out um, is in 2016, um, I think it was around June, I was driving to work and um, God kind of gave me four words, teach, inspire, mentor, and encourage, of course, not in that order. Didn't really know what they were for. Um, when I got to work, I just wrote them down on a sticky note that I actually still have. Um, and I sat it aside. Um, and unfortunately, um, about five months um, after that, one of my classmates from um, Harry um, died suddenly um, as a complication of pregnancy. Um, and actually her birthday, ironically, is today, uh, Dr. Marlene Dominguez Hicks. Um, and it was just a really um, very jarring and tragic reminder um, that even though we are very young um, and consider ourselves overall to be very healthy. Um, sometimes I think we feel like um, our time is infinite here on earth. Um, and it was a very jarring reminder that um, in fact, it is very finite. And whatever passion you have, whatever aspirations you have, whatever goals and dreams you have, um, you know, it's important that you don't procrastinate on whatever those may be um, and you try to accomplish them now. And so um, in going back to that acronym, um, with those letters, um, I created the word time. Um, and additionally, there were some young women in my church who wanted me to um, kind of have a seminar with them, um, sort of a question and answer session for OBGYN related issues. So um, with that session, in addition to the acronym and um, her passing, um, I felt the need to uh, start the organization time for her, um, not just for um, reproductive health education, which was one of my initial goals, um, but overall community health education, um, primarily targeting uh, women of color. Um, and an additional objective is for us to try to increase the number of black women um, in medicine and in various STEM fields. Um, and so we were um, officially incorporated in February of 2017. Um, initially the organization was named Time and I recently changed it to Time for her to be more descriptive. I just love that you're doing that. And I think it's so beautiful that you can manage your work and then do this on top of it. Mm -hmm. And I know how important the representation is. So thank you for that. Mm -hmm. I've included a link so that if anybody wants to go to your organization's webpage and learn more about it, they can. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Dr. Ojo Karens, did you want to add anything to that or should we jump into vaginal discharge? Uh, we can jump in, but I just want to say, uh, Dr. Harrison, that is amazing. I'm so proud of you um, on this anniversary that of your of your uh, friend's passing. Um, I'm glad that this is uh, something that um, was done in her name, and hope that it continues to prosper. Thank you. Um, Before we move forward, um, Dr. Harrison, can we see your shirt? <laughs> <laughs> yes, so this is very relevant to um, today's discussion. It says no basic vaginas, pH 3.8 to 4.5. Yes, <laughs> no basic vaginas, and that is where you should be. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> to be honest with you guys, I'm laughing, but I I don't actually know what it means about the basic part. Of it. <laughs> Maybe other people don't too. Um, well, to kind of go back to um, vaginal physiology, um, estrogen, um, you know, we talk about a lot of hormones that can influence the re uh, women's reproductive health system, but estrogen and progesterone are the two that we tend to focus on the most. Um, estrogen increases glycogen, which 
um, contributes to an increase in something called lactobacilli um, that subsequently increases lactic, lactic acid within the vagina. Um, and the acidity of the vagina is what tends to maintain the vaginal health. And so typically the pH of the vagina is acidic, which should be the range that's on the shirt. When you get to the basic vaginas, it's, it's usually not very good. <laughs> That's probably a whole other topic. <laughs> There's just so much we don't know about our own bodies. And I w have been talking with a friend of mine that we were like this many years old before we understood, like really just recently in trying to conceive children was when I first started to understand a little bit more about um, vaginal discharge and its fluctuations. What are the most common misunderstandings or questions you get from your patients? Um, I will say that some patients do think that, um, and there's no all encompassing, this is just, you know, from some visits that I've had with patients that all vaginal discharge is abnormal. Yeah. And that's not true. Um, especially when you are young um, and a reproductive age, um, you should have vaginal discharge. It means that your hormones are functioning normally. Um, of course, not all vaginal discharge is normal. Um, but, you know, especially when, um, you know, it's malodorous, um, you know, normal vaginal di discharge tends to be thin, white, or clear, um, you know, oftentimes, especially when you're around ovulation time, it tends to increase. Those are very normal physiologic things. Um, we tend to get a lot more concerned when there is symptoms of vaginitis. So, irritation, um, when there are foul odors coming from the vagina, especially, you know, kind of your fishy odors, or if there is significant discoloration of your vaginal discharge. So, you know, green, um, you know, things like that, you know, we tend to be much more concerned about brown or, you know, things that tend to be abnormal for you. Okay. Call your doctor if that's yeah. the case. Yes. Okay. Don't experiment because we have a lot of experimentation happening out in the world. Yeah. I, that, I can't echo enough. You know, I do not hate Google. I do not hate WebMD, but they everything that they say is not right. Everything that is on a message board is not correct. And that's the whole one of the purposes of us uh, having these Wednesday night lives is so we can get some correct information out of there. So, you know, you can buy a lot of things over the counter. You can use a lot of things uh, um, in your vagina, but not everything should go in there. So, Boric acid, don't just use that all willy-nilly. Don't just pick it up over the counter. I see it in Target a lot, or just, sorry, stores. Don't just pick it up and use it because wiping out, uh, boric acid will wipe everything out. Boric the acid will take away the good and the bad. And so when you take away the good bacteria, you really create the best environment for the bad bacteria and the yeast to, to grow. Uh, and so then there, that's where you... Uh, fall right into issues of infection um, or um, irritation. You know, just like Dr. Harrison said, not all discharge is bad. You should want a vagina when you're young, especially to be um, lubricated. That shows good health. Uh, one of the things that increases good lubrication is a good diet, a good, uh, uh, um, good health. Good hygiene. That, um, I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, no, no. I'll emphasize in the office too is that you know whatever goes in has to come out, mm -hmm. right? So when you have a very poor diet, like it's going to show itself in some way, fashion, or form. And people who consistently have that, this is your heart disease, this is your diabetes, disease, this is how your body expresses that. And mm -hmm. so um, you know, I think that's really important for you to mention. Um, definitely, your diet is important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you touched on one thing, Dr. Harrison, that is very true. Um, uh, with your menstrual cycle, it does change. And so at the beginning of your cycle, you know, you will have a thinner discharge uh, uh, towards after ovulation. It will become uh, thicker. Um, many reasons for that. Main reasons for um, fertility purposes, allowing um, it to be, to be a bit easier for sperm to get to the egg to ovulate. So our bodies are uh, doing what they should be doing when we have discharge change through the cycle, especially when you're not on any type of uh, contraceptive, contraceptive or hormone that uh, um, can affect that. Right. And I know, um, you know, even kind of echoing what you mentioned last week, last Wednesday, is that um, the vagina is a self-cleaning oven. 
And mm -hmm. so you don't have to assist her. Like the douches and things of that nature mm -hmm. are very problematic um, mm -hmm. and they tend to do more harm than good. Mm -hmm. um, and so you have to just be really, really careful with the things that are on the shelves in stores. Um, mm -hmm. Just because it says certain things on the bottle or on the box, it doesn't mean that you should get it and try it because I can't tell you how often I've seen people in the office with burns on their vagina and everything else from things that they've tried over the counter. Um, so just be very, very careful with things out here that, you know, you just want to want to try. Yeah. Do that with your um, hair products. <laughs> <laughs> no, <I'm not> <laughs> so, she doesn't need anything. really. <laughs> I love that self cleaning up. <laughs> I've never heard that before. And I'm going to be storing it and probably passing it on to my children. <laughs> Which brings me around to this question. Um, it just wasn't, it wasn't really taught to me or sorry, mom, if it was, I don't remember. <laughs> um, but what advice do you have? Um, what should, what should parents be telling their children? And I say children because this is information for both our male children and our female children. What, what should we pass on? How do we go about teaching about it? Um, that's a great question. Um, I think one thing that I especially emphasize with my younger, like adolescent patients and their parents is to really keep that open line of communication because so often, um, you know, moms, you know, I, I guess as people, we don't know every single thing that we should be telling our kids until something may come up. Um, but it's really important to keep that line of communication open because so many young women are like terrified of talking to their moms about anything related to their vagina, whether it's birth control or or whatever. But I mean, just even just vaginal discharge, odors, um, abnormal menstrual cycles, things of that nature that they're just really uncomfortable discussing. Um, it's really important for um you know, parents to emphasize very early on that those things are, you know, very, you know, normal. It's a, it's a conversation that should be um, approached um, just very openly and freely instead of, you know, something that to be ashamed of. Yeah. Um, because that's when you have young women who are experimenting with all types of stuff because they think something's wrong with them if they have increased vaginal discharge, which could be totally normal. Mm -hmm. and I definitely echo that sentiment. I think, you know, also as a parent, uh, just to take it a step further, it's okay if you don't know as a, a mm -hmm. mom uh, or, you know, um, a father, it's it's okay if you don't know the answer. Mm -hmm. um, there are many people out there, professionals that are willing to answer that. And so for my patients that have young uh, daughters, um, you know, I see myself as being a resource to them to answer those questions. And, you know, I don't mind daughters coming in and having a conversation, what's normal, what's not normal, or giving the mom that information to empower, help her empower her uh, herself and also her daughter. So uh, okay. it's okay if you don't have the answer, you can find a source. Absolutely. And I know that ACOG also recommends um, that the initial visit be between ages 13 and 15. And so often when I say that, parents are just like, what? And it's not for us to do an exam. It's just for us to establish that relationship with young women so that they know what we're here for, um, because we'll only be able to see their pediatricians for so long. And a lot of you know, young women have no idea what an OBGYN is, what we do, what we're here for. And so it's just really good to establish that relationship early on, let them know what our purpose is um, and, you know, what we're here to discuss if they if they need to. We've got Smiley Rice here who says she loves your shirt, Dr. Hairst. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Rice. <laughs> so we might have people who are um, joining us now. And if you are, thanks for being here and know that you can send us questions. Um, we might not cover every single thing, but we can come back to it. We've talked a lot uh, tonight about vaginal um, moisture and vaginal discharge, and that will lead us naturally into questions about vaginal dryness, which we'll be getting to um, in the future weeks. Um, but I did have one more um, quick question about, so our last week, we talked about sleeping without your underwear, um, sleeping sans skivvy. So I would imagine that this, the times when you get heavier discharges, especially important to not have underwear. So you're not keeping that area just super moist that it can breathe and air itself out. Um, when, when, what is the age range when that, um, 
Oh gosh, we're getting close to time. I have so many more questions. So do our <laughs> listeners, um, but we're going to have to come back to them. I was going to ask about when it starts and when it ends. I'll drop it in the comments. I'll ask them after. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Harrison, for joining us tonight.